Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tips and Tricks for Creating Winning Content Workshop, uh, powered by She's Magazine and Budweiser. And apparently, Budweiser has come up with a new challenge. It's called the Rule the New Challenge. And if you guys don't know about it, go and check out their website. Uh, you can get all the rules and regulations at instagram.com slash rule the new and budweiser.cheese.com come and you will get all the uh, amazing 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 information about this competition and challenge and you guys can have some fun over there and in today's workshop uh, we are going to be talking about creating content with whatever you have and however you can manage with it i am kshitij i am the founder of shoot guru which is an online platform on instagram instagram.com slash shoot guru and we also have an app called uh, shoot guru on android and on ios that teaches everybody for free uh, we do a regular free workshops and everything and you get every content for free and today's workshop is all about creating content with whatever resources you have before we begin uh, here are a few things that you need to need to be careful about uh, please be mute at all times if you have anything to say raise your hands uh, or put it in the chat box in the q a section uh, we will be uh, able to take it up and i will be answering that as well uh, put it in the q and a tab and we will take those questions up then uh, please if you'd logged it through your phone keep it on silent uh, it if you because somebody's talking in your phone and we turn your mic on for something and if it rings in between it's a big hassle uh, if we do put put up polls please 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 take part in polls take notes uh, and definitely if you guys want uh, this presentation post this uh, event just dm me on instagram and i will share it with you otherwise it will be available uh, it is actually available on uh, the shoot guru app and you guys can get it up from there as well uh, and if you guys have any questions just put in the q a box all right let's begin the first part is of any production is the production design uh first of all can you guys tell me where you guys are from and uh, your name and your city please in the chat box uh nice so we have people coming in from kolkata gurgaon karnataka mumbai Ahmedabad, Chennai, Delhi, more from Kolkata. Awesome. We have a mix of a lot of people coming in from a lot of places in India. And I'm really, really glad that you guys are here. And I am. Uh, I would like to thank you guys for attending this workshop. It is actually always a pleasure uh, connecting with so many people who are interested in filmmaking, photography, and other such things. And we love to be connected with all of you. Uh, again, I am Kshitij from Shoot Guru and I'm based out of Gurgaon. So, this is hi from Gurgaon to everybody and uh, welcome to this workshop. Now, again, second question in the chat box. Again, kindly put whether you're a photographer or a filmmaker or a digital content creator, how would you categorize yourself? Also, are you professional or an amateur? Put it in the same sentence saying, I'm an amateur uh, photographer or an amateur filmmaker, I'm a professional filmmaker, professional photographer, and so on and so forth. Kindly put it there so I know what kind of a mix of people that I am actually talking to over here. I always keep an eye out on the chat box. If you guys have anything, I will pick it up. Uh, make sure your answers go to all panelists and attendees uh, so that uh, I get to read them as well. Don't send any private messages or anything like that. Uh, so we have a photographer, graphic designer, digital maker. So definitely you are a digital content creator. Uh, we have video creator uh, for travel content. Amazing. I am going to be taking up a lot of travel content that I'm going to be showing you guys uh, in this workshop today. Uh, learned somebody here who's learning photography. There are a few photographers. Amazing. So guys, let's let's start uh, by the time. Oh, please keep answering. Don't uh, stop uh, if I start. Uh, keep answering. I would love to look at this chat uh, post this session as well. So the first and foremost thing that we need to take care of when we are heading towards any kind of production, be it a production that you're doing at home or you're doing it at a commercial space or you're doing it for a client, you have to have a solid production design. 
Now, production design is very important. It is the thing that actually takes care of everything that a production holds. Uh, right from budget to schedule, everything needs to be covered in production design. So when you talk about budget, before you even start shooting anything, before you even start planning anything, you need to be sure what kind of funds and resources are available to you. And what we actually call it, it is the actual funding of the film, which what uh, is, is the resources available to you, what we call it is a resource budget. The resource budget is things that you have in hand, plus the things you can actually rent out or you can utilize. So your resource budget is very, very important. It should include all your costs uh, relating your personal costs as well, your phone costs, your internet costs, your travel costs, production costs, equipment rental costs, anything and everything that is adding cost to your pocket and is burning your pocket in any manner should be covered up in the budget. You need to start collaborating for crew or hiring crew, booking crew right in the beginning. So you need to make sure how much of crew you actually need and what is the kind of crew you need. For example, you could be a person who does the directing, who does the production, who does the camera, who loves doing editing. But for a film project, you need to divide your work. You can't really fly solo until unless you're doing a travel shoot or you're doing a documentary shoot where you are actually uh, going around the world or going around India, going around anywhere and traveling solo. But when you're doing a bigger production, when you're doing a creative production, you need help in uh, different things. Maybe to pick up and drop lights and tripods or anything and everything that needs to be done under the sun. Then location recce and location scouting is very very important when you guys try out the challenge from budweiser make sure you uh, the locations that you choose are very very easily accessible they have the things that you want and you need they have uh, electricity for the basic things it has uh, if you're using dialogue so it has to have good sound capability when i say sound capability means there should be no construction spots nearby or there should be no very busy roads nearby so that you get very very clear clean sound because you will not have budgets to actually get dubbing done then you have to have a pre-production meeting. Make sure. And in these times, we do e-meetings most of the time because our shoots are e-shoots. Uh, very few people have started physically uh, working together. But in any case, if you guys are also meeting for the shoot, but before the shoot, you should do a PPM, which is a pre-production meeting. These pre-production meetings are very, very essential. And they add value to the final product because when a lot of creative-minded people come together, the last minute add-ons, the last minute value additions are always really, really great. And they actually allow you to make your product even better. So a pre-production meeting is the core essential. And you can have an e-pre-production meeting wherein you get them all on a Zoom meet like this. And you talk to each other and create a meeting atmosphere. Always have a short list. Even if you're doing a three scene film, even if you're doing a one location film, even if you're acting in the film yourself, directing it, and you're the one man army to do everything, create a short division, create a short list, create something that will actually allow you to shoot smoothly on a shoot and you will not have any issues or any hiccups when it comes to the actual production. I have been on shoots, I have been part of productions, wherein we actually did not have any scripts to work with. We did not have anything to work with. And we would reach the location and understand what the needs of the director were just to know that it could have been done in the least possible equipment, but we carried everything. So always have a short list. <clears throat> and the, another reason to have a short list is you need to know what you're shooting. You need to understand your essential shots. And you need to have a checklist of the essentials so that you do not miss out on them and your edit is not screwed up just because of that. Get prior permissions. Guys, in today's day and age, 
please it's a request if you don't have a choice until you don't have a choice don't shoot gorilla if you have the choice to get permissions if you don't have to burn your banks for it please 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 get permissions uh, these days people are getting tough with uh, people shooting on the streets they the police are getting very tough with them and the repercussions are very very high so never ever shoot without permissions until unless it is a documentary where you need to show things which you can't get permissions for then you do gorilla shoot with minimalistic equipment equipment that is not visible shoot with shoot with your phone all uh, all i care then you will not be in the eyes of people you will not be noticed by authorities and you can get by it it's not that hard always determine your equipment needs you need to understand what your needs are whether you need a big camera a small camera an action camera a waterproof body you need a tripod do you need a gimbal do you need a drone all these things will depend on the concept that you build all these things will depend on the scripts that you've built and basis that you will be able to decide what you want to shoot never carry equipment that you will never use for example if you don't need a gimbal just don't hire a gimbal because you have the budget to do it you will end up wasting time plus the people on shoot will waste time because they would want to try it and they want to check it out and we've actually been part of something similar where we were on a shoot in mumbai and it was a short film the short film got the shoot got cancelled because of rains but we actually kept the gimbal back which was rented and if i would have sent it back within an hour i would have got my refund back but i didn't i kept it back just to try how to balance it and we screwed that up as well we didn't know how to balance it uh, and we ended up losing time and we ended up losing money but one thing we didn't end up losing is how not to do some things we learned how not to balance a gimbal anyways going ahead you need to schedule you need perfect schedules because there are a lot of people who will be depending on your schedules especially your clients especially people uh, who are in the community uh, who are joining you who are collaborating with you all these people need to be informed when you're shooting what you're shooting how you're shooting what their clothes should be like what their props are what location is so all these things needs to be scheduled all these things need to be planned this is when you're doing big production and this is core basics but there are times when you do a run and gun there are times when you go ahead and just do not actually have a shoot uh how many of you guys and this is another question i want to open to the floor how many of you guys love traveling and love shooting i know it's bad times to ask this because we are stuck at home but still once the lockdown opens i know everybody is has the urge to go out. so how many of you guys are travel filmmakers and travel photographers and would love to shoot something like that guys put it in the chat box put your answer in the chat box it will help me analyze my audience later only one person out of so many people out of 60 72 people only one person wants to travel the world and do film making photography uh, there are some more people coming in Yes, there are a lot of people coming in. So when you're doing travel shoots, when you're doing documentary shoots, when you're doing things that uh, you can't be predictive about, you can't be really sure about. You actually do run and gun. You actually uh, run and shoot. So this is a film that I'm sharing with you guys. Uh, just check it out. It's on YouTube. I'm sharing with you. If I run it here, it will lag. So I'm putting the uh, link uh, for all the attendees and the panelists as well. Just uh, it's a very short film. click on the link it'll open youtube for you and come back so we will wait for you guys till the uh, link finishes i'm going to run it here as well on my system so that i know when it finishes and see you back in let's say less than 2 minutes here you go and guys when you're done just come back and say done and i shall continue
Awesome. There are a few guys who are done and we'll just wait for a few more to walk back in. Lovely. Okay, continuing ahead. Uh, this session is all about tips and here is my tip number one. Always shoot the highest possible quality of video that you can with any device you have. If you're shooting with the phone, be it a phone, be it a camera, anything that you're shooting with, always, always shoot the highest possible quality. I personally prefer shooting 4K, not because it is four times HD. If you look at the image, if you look at the purple zone versus the red zone, the red zone is actually four times the purple zone so the four times the image you can actually uh, get higher resolution better quality better sharpness and all the attributes of a higher quality index that come together to form the video and it is that quality that you are actually looking for it is that quality that you are actually targeting for any production so there is a question, did you use any external light source? No, Sanjay, I did not use any external light source for the video that you guys just saw. It is a travel film. It is a travel documentary film, which actually did not allow me to take any, any lights with me. So whatever you sh uh, had seen in the film was shot on actual light. So guys, like I said, tip number one, always, always shoot higher resolution. Even if in your phone, today's phones also shoot 4K but if you have cameras, like for example, I have an entry level camera right here. It's a Lumix G9. This also shoots 4K and this shoots 120 FPS slow mo as well. It's a brilliant uh, device to have and it's dirt cheap. It fits in your pocket very, very easily. When you're shooting cinema, when you are uh, talking about uh, content that you shoot for cinema, one thing which is a standard cinema is always shot at 24 frames per second or 23.97. And that is the standard that was kept by the industry to match the film speeds that people were getting in their time. So when you're shooting cinema, it is about 24 frames per second. When you're talking about slow mos, so when you, I'm going to edit 24 frames per second as well. But if I am, I want to slow mo, I need to a frame rate because if I shoot 24 frames per second, slow it down on a 24 frames per second timeline, I will lose content. What are 24 frames per second? Video is actually a series of images that come together to form a one second of video. That is 24 images coming together one after another to form that smooth motion. Hence, 24 frames per second. And when you are wanting slow-mo, go higher. If you want to record slow-mo, do 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, 100 frames per second, 200 frames per second, whatever your camera capability is. But always decide on slow-mo shots separately because you will end up losing sound. And if you don't have the correct lighting conditions, you will also end up losing quality. And most importantly, slow-mo settings are not available in 4k in most of the devices on entry level but they are available in hd so it's okay you can mix that kind of footage so 24 frames per second if you're doing cinematic shots cinema is always 24 frames per second but higher frame rates if you want to shoot slow-mo another important factor that you guys need to take care of is that the shutter speed of your camera should be double the frame rate so if i'm shooting 24 frames per second the shutter speed needs to be at 1 by 48 but your, if your camera does not have 1 by 48 the nearest above is the 1 by 50 second so always keep it at 1 by 50 this is a sync that happens between the shutter and the sensor because the sensor is capturing light directly and there is no physical shutter in your camera when you're recording video so it's actually the e curtain or the e shutter that i'm talking about it is the frequency at which the sensor is refreshing so it needs to be double the frame rate because this when the shutter exposes exposes to twice uh, to expose one frame it moves twice and hence it needs that double speed another thing you need it to be in sync because the motion blur that you're capturing the blur the motion blur which is natural to human eyes this is a motion blur which is natural to human eyes needs to be captured in a way where the motion of the scene looks very natural very realistic and that is what cinema is all about but if you're stuck in situations where you are shooting outdoors if you're stuck in situations where there is bright sun 
ramp do not ramp up shutter uh, avoid ramping up shutter uh, because uh, when you ramp up shutter you lose motion blur as well you get very sharp images and they look very bad and they look unrealistic and they it causes a uh, phenomena called mooring so avoid that and when i talk about shutter shutter is the speed of at which your sensor is refreshing in photography it is the shutter speed at which the camera the duration of light uh, the camera allows the du uh, the light to enter the sensor for the duration that is shutter speed aperture is the lens the opening which is the uh, opening of the lens which is the quality of light and then we have iso as well which is the quality of, quality of light but when it comes to video you just have to remember 24 frames per second the shutter has to be fixed at 1 by 50th if you are in bright day and sun use neutral density filters use nd filters to get that ratio correct if you keep that ratio correct if you keep that in sync you will always get cinematic shots even if you're doing slow mo if you're doing higher frame rates like 60 frames per second 100 frames per second 200 frames per second you will have to keep your shutter double so imagine you shooting 60 frames per second your shutter will be 1 by 120 or 1 by 125 whatever is the closest and whatever is available to you that is the sync speeds that you need to get that cinematic motion blur for the quality that you are actually looking for and this is the mistake what people make when they enter situations where there is bright light where they have too much light they ramp up the shutter and when they ramp up the shutter it actually leads to but quality you you get weird kind of sharpness your motion uh, natural motion blur disappears and you get very very weird looking films then what gear do you use you can use right from a phone to a multi cam setup where you have multiple cameras multiple lenses and lot of added equipment this is another film that I would love you guys to watch because it is going to be basis of the talk that I do ahead and there are some tips I'm going to be giving basis this in terms of using light, using uh, different things. So we're going to watch this film. Once you're done, kindly come back and say done and we will continue talking. And here is the link. Uh, Sanjay, no. Uh, uh, I'm going to answer this once people come back. It's a very good question. Sanjay will answer it once people come back. Guys, remember, once you're done, please come back and say done so that we can continue. Amazing. You guys are back. Thanks, the punkers. 
So continuing, uh, we did have uh, multiple cameras, we did multiple lenses, but most of the shots that you see in this film were handheld and most of the setups that you see were run and gun because when we reached the place, a lot of reality checks happened and a lot of things changed. So whenever you're going somewhere, be very, very sure what you're carrying, be very sure about your equipment and be very sure what you have in your arsenal to get the best quality possible, to get the best of everything and hence they will deliver good content. So first, the light, it has to be the best light possible because lighting really, really creates the mood, the ambience and everything that you can inside a shoot. Use as much natural light sources as possible because light source, natural light sources are brilliant. They give nice quality. So use windows if you're shooting inside a room, use doorways if you're shooting in a room. Uh, but in case you can't, then you move to something what we call the practical. So the practical are lights that are available in the room. It could be a tube light. It could be a lamp kept on the side. It could be a bulb that is there in that room. Try using any practical lights possible which are existing and which are available to you. Then you could move from a one light setup to a three light setup depending on your requirements. And of course, all of this matters and depends on your budget. If you don't have the budgets, guys, stick to natural lights. Don't put scenes in your films that require additional lighting. Just go beyond it and don't do it. You can actually move to mixed lighting. If you want to use light and you want to mix it with natural light coming from a light source, you can do that as well. It just takes minor adjustments to the white balance. And once you're done with corrected white balance, you can get some beautiful shots as well. Definitely, definitely use diffusers because soft light when falling onto a person makes it very, very decent and very, very palatable to view. And if you remember that when we do portrait shoots, we always ask for diffusers because of the soft skin tones that we want on our uh, subject on this uh, or when of the of all the tones that we want to show it uh, to about to our sub uh, to our subject's skin and all the light that is there to create the mood. So when we are talking about lighting, always use diffusers to create that soft light, which actually adds value to your scene and does not take it away. Don't use harsh lights or hard lights uh, for one simple reason, because your actors will be hampered or if you're shooting documentaries and the subject will be hampered, you do not want them to be irritated or you do not want them to have a switched off mood and they will actually not be able to perform. Another tip, use flicker free lighting guys use flicker free led lighting because if you're shooting situations where you need to use external lights or you need to have more lights get flicker free lights because if your shutter changes or any element of your settings changes it could lead to a flicker which is very 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 hard and next to impossible to remove in post production so you guys can't really depend on post when we talk about lighting so light setups could be as simple as this. Uh, here we used uh, the red uh, box here is light and the black box is the camera and of course the circle is the subject. If you look at it, we had a natural light source coming in from the behind. There was a window and on the right we had a, we have a diffuser. The dotted line is a diffuser. We have a diffuser with the light falling onto her face right about here. This area of the face. And of course, this actually allowed me to kind of, I'm going to just add note as well. If you look here, the light is actually falling here. This light is very clean. This light is very, very soft on her face. It is not taking away. And the other side, if you see the practical that we have, the practical right here, this is throwing light to here as well on the face, on the chest, and of course, creating a differentiator right about here. So these lights, this lighting setup is what we call as a one light setup. This is the easiest that you can do. Always look for natural uh, sources of light that you are that you have, and always look for uh, uh, sources of light that add value to your shot, and then go ahead and do them. The most important element of any film is sound. If you don't have good sound, you will end up losing your audience. Imagine you're sitting and you're listening to somebody for one hour, two hours, three hours. You can turn the visual off, but if the sound is not good, 
you can't do anything about it. So imagine if somebody has to watch your video where the sound is really, really bad and it is taking them a while to watch it or they are getting irritated, they will switch off and your video content will not get views and your video content will not be success. So you guys have to be very, very careful in what you do in terms of sound. There are many things available. One of them is a shotgun mic, which you see on the bottom right corner from DT. These mics are directional. Wherever you point them, you they will capture sound. They can be attached directly onto the cameras, but if you're using balanced sound like uh, XLR units or anything, you need a mixer or you need an external recorder like a zoom recorder. Lavalier mics are preferred in interviews where you cannot uh, go, uh, when you have to do a wider shot uh, where your boom will be available or you have to stand away from your subject with your sound and you have to go away. So use wireless lavalier mics or even wired lavalier mics where you can add the mic to the collar Make sure it is not rubbing to any surfaces because lavalier mics have a tendency of rubbing and creating very, very bad sound and hence uh, your sound quality will be reduced. Then you get those smaller video mics as well. Smaller video mics are exactly like shotgun mics except they don't have balanced sound. They actually come with a headphone jack, a 3.5 mm jack. That is not balanced sound but still gives you decent sound to work with and gives you a run and gun facility. If you are in situation, for example, all the interviews that you saw in the Nashta film were taken on a run and gun video mic from DD itself and the mic gave us some amazing, amazing quality of sound. Even in situation where there was a lot of traffic and there were a lot of people roaming around, we still got decent sound to capture. XLR preferred over 3.5 mm any day because XLR is balanced sound it is higher quality and more stable than a 3.5 mm jack which is actually like a headphone jack and a headphone mic and of course if you don't have that option in your camera to mount an XLR you can always use uh, an external recorder there's a recorder making company called zoom z o o m so the zoom h6n or the zoom h4 and the zoom h1 is a good option if you want to record sound externally and I have been talking about a lot of big equipment. I have been talking about a lot of uh, things that uh, are available to us as a production house. And you must be wondering, yeah, we don't have anything. How can we actually produce something like this? Guys, you will change your mind once you watch this. This is my dream. If Corona wouldn't have hit this year, I would have already finished this film uh, so Leonardo was coming to India and we were doing something with him, but that couldn't happen. And now we're planning for next year. Hopefully by next year, the lockdown will open. So this is the film by Leonardo D'Alessandri and he has done some amazing work on it. If you've not seen it before, do take it. What is called Watchtower of Turkey. And if you have seen it, we can chat more on the chat box by the time others who have not seen it, see it, come back and say done.
I'm not actually talking in English right now. Amazing, and I'm glad you guys liked it because it is actually a dream of ours to do something very similar, and that is what all of my content really, really focuses on: is developing tips, tricks, and techniques that could make this better. And we are actually doing something like this very, very soon. If any of you guys want to be a part of it, just DM me on Instagram, and we can take things forward. We will be traveling across India by road to shoot something very similar in every city. and why did we actually think that we could easily do it this was his kit he just had one camera uh, for video and one camera for photography uh, the photography camera was a very very basic camera and the video camera was a uh, uh, lumix gh3 a gh3 this is an old film he had a tripod he had a monopod and he had uh, only three lenses a bag and a uh, action camera and with this minimalistic equipment he was able to create that masterpiece and that is what it really is about it is all about storytelling it is all about hard work perseverance and work he traveled for one month and he actually did post production for 40 days it took him 40 days to do post production he actually took one whole week or two whole weeks just to produce some music just to create the music and imagine all the transitions that you see are created by hand because at that point in time when he was editing that film there was no transition transition packs there were no color grading packs nothing available and he did it very very well uh sanjay yes zoom h4 and it is one of my recommendations if you're recording externally uh but then again it depends on your usage if you can get wireless transmissions because we are in a day and age of corona and you need social distancing so if you are working on commercial projects or even if you're working with friends if you're stuck in weird position and places get wireless transmission the best ones to get are the mars 400s from hollyland hollyland makes these amazing amazing uh wireless transmission systems that will actually allow you to transmit hd data for 400 feet and i recommend this right now only because we need to have social distancing because in the situation in the current situation we are the people who are exposed to a lot of people when we go on shoots who is interested in music videos over here anybody interested in music videos uh sanjay i personally prefer the dt uh mics the dt mics are amazing when it comes to external mics okay there are a lot of people who are let me show you this and my question to you will be once you see this video I am also going to show you the behind the scenes of this video. I need you guys to tell me the budget that you feel is or was of the music video and uh how much do you think that 
uh, artists spent on it so here is the video it's not a very long video it's a very short video and then we're going to show you a small bts of it as well just to show you how the magic really happens again once you're done come back and sit down All right, thank you, thank you so much, Galaxy J3 Pro. If you guys can change your names, it would be easy for me to remember. Like Redmi J3, I don't want to call you Redmi and Galaxy J3, so please uh, rename your uh, self, and you can, I could easily tell uh, who you are, or just put in the group. Uh, I will check that out. And uh, so, any guesses on what kind of budgets could we we have been working on when we did this project? Ninety-five thousand, amazing, Bhavan. I would, I love you for that because that's not even close. Two lakhs. Okay, people are going above four lakhs, one point five lakhs. Guys, go down. What is the lowest that you think we could have actually shot this with? Seventy thousand, fifty thousand, sixty thousand. 25, 30,000, God of, okay. 30,000, okay. I'm going to show you the behind the scenes and then tell me the budget. This is the behind the scenes again. Check it out. 
and guys uh, all these channels that i'm sharing are uh, our channels please please if you can subscribe like share and leave a comment it will be highly appreciated pankaj 50000 thank you thanks gautam Guys, check out the behind the scenes if you're back, and once you do, do come back and say done. Link to the behind the scenes again. awesome so since you guys are coming back and a lot of people are giving very very close budgets the actual budget of the video was approximately 1.5 lakhs if that would have been a real life shoot and that is a budget not to the client but a budget to us a cost to us but it costed us only 15000 because the whole shoot was a 100% collaboration right from the cars to the equipment to the models to the people to his clothes everything was 100% collaboration when you're traveling solo when you are on the road it is good to be solo it is good to be alone you can work out masterpieces like the washer of turkey but when you are working with people when you are working with storylines when you are working with music videos in particular you need teams and in today's day and age when budgets are really really skyballing and we are actually getting hurt a lot because of low budgets we have to start collaborating so look out for people who have equipment like high end cameras that shoot 4k look out for people who have uh, equipment that you guys can use for your uh, like gimbals like drones and you can find these people all across the spectrum we shoot guru also collaborates with uh, independent artists i produce about 5 to 10 artists every year we do music videos if you guys are musicians if you guys have songs i will produce it if i like it uh, it goes under shoot guru records and that is what we do as well so look for people like me look for people like us and uh, we actually would love to collaborate with everybody and look out for collaborations because it is a day and age of collaboration it is a day and age where you can deliver very very high end projects you can deliver very very high end uh, pieces of work with good quality with everything that you need at a very low cost if you do your uh, cards right if you don't invest too much into equipment do everything on a collaboration basis now another few tips that i would want to give you is mo on movements if you really want your films to look really cinematic if you want your films to look really nice you would need to have some kind of movement in there The first type of movement is, of course, handheld. When you're holding the camera for video, hold it like you would hold it for photography. Now, this is why I love shooting on mirrorless cameras. This is why I love shooting on the Lumix series because the mirrorless camera gives me the ability to use the viewfinder, which is an electronic viewfinder, to shoot my shots. Because if I'm shooting handheld, if I'm shooting uh, run and gun shoot, if I'm shooting music videos, or if I'm shooting travel, uh, the Thailand film, if you guys saw, was completely handheld. the thailand film uh, that i showed in the right in the beginning if most of you weren't there for it but it was completely completely handled i'm going to put up the link again once we end this workshop and otherwise i share it with you guys as well 
but if you are shooting handheld if you are uh, shooting in a run and gun position always always hold your camera in a way where your grip is like a photography grip and close hold it as close to your body as possible make sure it is as close to your body and you're shooting like you're doing photography so you use your left hand or your uh, right hand whatever is your pivot hand as a stable hand keep it close to your body either use the viewfinder to shoot it or keep use if you use a screen flip it out so that you have a better view and why i ask people to flip it out is because you can use one hand to flip your screen to get lower angle shots if you want top angle shots you can flip it down so these kind of additional things that you will need then always use lenses with internal stabilization and is which is called is so that you don't have shaky shots shaky shots look good if the treatment of the film is made like that but in general shaky shots look very 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 good so be very very careful about it uh then we go on to keep short focal lens when i say keep short focal lens because if you use tele lenses handheld like a 70 to 200 or 100 400 it will always give you a shake so keep it on wider lenses if you keep your frame wide if you're doing wide shots you will never ever get very very uh uh, shaky shots because on a wide frame the shake is absorbed by the camera it is absorbed by the frame itself and you don't get too much of shake try using evf like i said that is the electronic viewfinder or like a photographer breathe don't hold your breath in don't do this because if you do this you're holding your breath here and you will end up losing that breath and you will end up getting a shake in your shot avoid doing it do not do it at all if you have autofocus built into your camera, if you have focus tracking, if you have face to time, use it. Because if you are not too good with manual focus, you will struggle maintaining focus with lenses. And that will also lead to very bad shots and will lead to a huge, huge time addition to your uh, production. Then use ma manually uh, when you do uh, using manual lenses do not rack focus whenever what i mean racking focus is do not try focus shifting when you're on the move keep your camera stable focus shift on inanimate objects as from a person to person who's sitting at one place and not moving do not ra rack focus if the subjects are moving block characters you should know where your subjects are you should know where they're standing where they would be standing that allows you to do a lot of focus uh, clicking that allows you to have a lot of focus blocking and you will get those very very sharp shots that you need then don't run you have to be very smooth with it run and gun only if you're using a gimbal but if handheld never ever 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 run and of course try shooting higher frame rates because they will allow you, you to get some slow mos later use a tripod wherever possible stabilized film stabilized shots are always beautiful plus tripods allow you to pan and tilt wherever possible and however possible block shots look beautiful scenery block shots look beautiful time lapses which are stable at one place look beautiful don't pan if you are not using a pan shot uh, i personally don't like panning arms uh, because panning arms do not give me that ability to be very smooth i try holding the camera and moving the camera left to right or i try i like holding the head of the tripod and moving it left to right or tilt up tilt down because that is way more smoother and way more in control avoid shots without intention what I mean is if you are doing a pan shot, if I'm doing a left to right pan and there is no action happening on the right, do not pan. You don't need that pan. Do not just randomly move your camera. Do not just randomly do pan shots or anything uh, because you have the ability to do it or because you know how to do it and you will not need it. Try shooting block shots and of course have a pre-roll of three to five seconds. That is like start your shoot. Hold for three seconds, take your shot before ending, hold for three seconds. You get a nice pre-roll and a nice post-roll and of course a nice middle in the setup. Shot reveals, tilt up, tilt down. So when you're doing this, this is tilt up, this is tilt down, this is pan left and this is pan right. So when you are actually uh, shooting, just take care of these shots and keep it as simple as possible, guys. The more simpler, the much better it is. Gimbals. Gimbals are tricky. 
don't use a gimbal without learning how to balance it because you will end up wasting a lot of time these gimbal machines are very very precise they have to be very very high precision they can make or break a shot by getting vibration inside your shot and that vibration cannot be stabilized in post at all so first learn how to balance it make sure it is calibrated you have a lot of gimbals available single handed dual with a steady rig uh, and of course walk like a ninja try learning how to walk like a ninja practice how to walk like a ninja so that you get that smooth motion from your heel to toe you get that ultra smooth motion from your heel to toe when you a uh, toe when you're moving inside a shot just to keep your shot very stable just to keep your shot very very in sync then don't overuse gimbals just don't shoot the whole film just by using gimbal have stabilized shots uh, get stability into your film because stability in film also adds value to the story stability inside the film adds value to the shots and stability in the film also adds a hold to your audience and they stick around again keep motivated shots very similar to the tripod so you have a fake slider uh, i don't have a gimbal right here but i will share the link of the gimbal practice within the ppt when i share it uh, you guys can download it from the shoot guru app and uh, of course this will be uh, available on youtube as well any questions anybody has just put in the q and a box i will actually pick them up guys anything just ask don't hesitate it could be a question that your friends also want to know and they're not asking well you've shot it you have uh, scripted it you've shot it now comes post production in post production the most important thing is storage so when you are actually uh, storing your data make sure you put it on bigger hard drives powered hard drives because portable hard drives are not that stable and you definitely don't want to move around with too much with portable hard drives they will fail uh, get ssd solid state drives to work with i know they are expensive but they are very 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 stable i have one hooked up to my system right now this is an ssd by uh, seagate and it's a beautiful it's is a 1 terabyte ssd right here it costed me about 10000 rupees and amazing performance it increases the speed of your edits and everything so hardik has a question gimbal for mobile uh, there is a brand called moza and there is a brand called dji both of them make very very brilliant uh, phone gimbals and uh, i personally love the dji osmo 3 for mobile because it has the capability of tracking motion and it has a capability of uh, adding lenses to your phone while you are shooting on the gimbal uh, rohit my instagram id is at the rate shoot guru s h w o t g u r u at the rate shoot guru that is my email, uh, my insta id uh hadik the osmo mobile 3 is the one that i would recommend any hack to produce wind for a scene well um if you want to produce wind there is a fan which uh, the tent wallas or the uh, caterers uh, the wedding tent guys use it's called the farata do use that that will give you good enough air to fly anybody's clothes and hair off and it's it's a decent option but remember it makes a lot of noise so you can't have dialogues at all going ahead when it comes to post production there is always a software issue that was software should we be using um uh, i use davinci because davinci actually gives me the ability to edit for free davinci resolve 16 is actually free guys check it out it's brilliant but premiere and uh, final cut pro are also options but they're expensive you need to buy them till the time you can actually afford of fcp or a, a adobe premiere go for davinci it's brilliant and it has all the bells and whistles you want to edit a film then there's a question by rohan uh memory card plays vital role in shooting which memory card you use uh, and its speed uh, i don't know if it's here in this right now i actually use the extreme pro cards from sandisk and if i'm not i don't know this i don't remember the thing but they're class 10 u3 cards and that is what is needed to record 4k at 60 fps when we are shooting that much uh 
Harish Kumar, I think Cheese will share the video for this. Uh, I would request Cheese to share the video. That would be a great thing. Uh, Gotham, uh, I would vouch for Da Vinci, guys. Guys, if you really want to experience what Da Vinci is, you can go to my Instagram ID. In my Instagram ID, there is a link in my bio. Or let me just share this link with you guys over here. It has a free workshop on uh, Da Vinci in it. It's a webinar on Da Vinci, guys. Do check it out. It is pretty fantastic. I love it. And that is why I kind of collaborated with these guys to give us one free webinar. And of course, they have a course also. But uh, then again, course is paid. You don't really have to buy the course, but the webinar would actually work for you. Plus, my app where you will get this PPT uh, in the free uh, zone is also available on this link if you guys want. Basic workflows, uh, online offline workflows, uh, you actually work on proxies. Proxies will allow you to edit very, very, very high quality data and get uh, uh, and get good quality content. But remember, when you're editing proxies, you have to turn them off before doing color correction. Never ever in your life, in your dreams, do color correction on proxies because that will actually ruin your footage completely any more questions do we have i'm actually done with the presentations quite fast today i didn't expect it to finish it this early but uh, we didn't have much questions coming in but does anybody have any more questions So Shadis, uh, Sumitra is here from Budweiser. Yeah, yeah, I was just, yeah, I was about yeah. to call Sumitra. And Sumitra, could you come in and please introduce the challenge? And I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, would you have something to share or do you want me to share the PDF? Mukeshi, should I share the PDF uh, or Sumitra can share? Um, Sumitra will take care, I guess. Uh, Sumitra, you can unmute yourself. Yes, team. One second. He's just um, figuring this. I think he's having network it, issues. I, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, till that time, I'll just pick up some questions. Sure. Sure. Uh, there's a question from Roshan that says, uh, by, uh, oh, sorry, I missed this question before. Thank you, Roshan, for asking this again. Uh, by using a filter, does it reduce image quality? It depends what filters you buy. I personally get the Hyda filters. Hyda filters have a very, very fine precision glass. It's a diamond cut glass, so you don't get any overcasts. You don't get any aberrations. And the glass is so clear that it actually adds value to your production rather than reducing it. Uh, Arun, uh, Arunalo, uh, uh, basically proxy edit is when you import footage into DaVinci, Premiere or uh, Final Pro, you have an option of turning proxies on, turning uh, media conversion on, which allows you to reduce the file size of your very, very high heavy duty uh, media. If you're shooting 4K, you reduce it to very, very small sizes. It allows you to ultra smooth edits, even if you're editing on very old machines. Like for example, I have a 2012 MacBook Pro. I still edit 4K footage on it without any hassle. All the time that it takes is the conversion into proxies. But remember, when you're doing color correction, turn proxy off because in color correction, you will never do playback. So it's okay, it will still work around it. Second, when you're rendering the files, it will take time for the final renders and just bear with that. Uh, importance of storyboards for filmmaking. Storyboards are very, very essential, especially short divisions and short breakdowns and short lists are the most uh, essential ones uh, that you need, without which I would actually say no to any shoot. If I'm working with directors, if I'm working with script writers, if I'm collaborating, and if anybody wants to collaborate with me, you need your pre-production, right? You need to have storyboards and you need to have short divisions. Uh, is it true? Okay, this is done. Uh, please tell uh, suitable uh, mic for uh, fil uh, mobile filmmaking. There's a brand called DET, uh, D-E-I-T-Y, DET. They make amazing mics even for mobile phones. Guys, check it out. It's not that expensive for the quality that the mic is giving. Yes, you can edit and color grade a full movie and also sound design in DaVinci itself. You don't need to switch software. They have really, really uh, worked very well. Uh, Hardik, if you're talking about... Uh, 
uh, proxies, yes, uh, uh, when you reduce uh, quality, you don't actually uh, upload that proxy file, you upload a full master file, you have to reconnect master media. And mic, Deity mic, D-E-I-T-Y, Deity makes amazing mics, they're now available in India, they're very, very high precision mic, but if you don't have budgets, you can also go for Boya or Lensgo, they make decent mics as well. Okay, Sumit, uh, Sumitra is here, hi Sumitra, how are you? Hey guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, so I'm going to stop sharing so that you can share your screen and uh, show Absolutely. people the, Thanks, the uh, fun fun bit of today's thing. I've given all the gyan possible and now is the really fun bit where they get to know how they can actually win 10 lakh rupees, man. And that's an opportunity even I, I, I'm i funding like 20. Guys, if you guys want to collaborate for this, I'm in. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sumitra, over to you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a ton, uh, Shitaj. Uh, I joined it a little bit late, but I picked up some of the tips and tricks from you. Uh, I'm not that much of a content creator, uh, but I'm sure we're going to get started. <laughs> with, uh, with no, you, you can. Everybody's a content creator. If you create <laughs> selfies, you're a content creator. That's uh, that's an amazing attitude, man. Thanks a ton. Uh, very insightful session. Uh, also, uh, big thanks for uh, Chi's uh, photography for, uh, you know, for hosting the session for all the guys. Uh, uh, hi guys, I see uh, there are more than uh, more than 100 uh, participants now, I think 112 uh, people out there. Uh, glad to have you on a Saturday evening uh, with us on this call. Uh, before before I start, you know, I'll just quick, uh, quickly introduce myself. My name is Somitra, Somitra Chaube, uh, and I lead advisor brand uh, for India. So I work with the brand very closely on on you know on uh, on the campaign side of things, uh, and uh, the latest thing that we have put out there is rule the new. Uh, I'm sure that you know uh, a lot of us uh, you know may have heard or may know about Budweiser already, but uh, I'll just give you you know brief context before I get started with the campaign. Uh, we've been here 11 years uh, now. I think you know we we were imported in 2009, uh, and since then you know we have uh, we have only grown. Uh, in India, and it's a phenomenal market. Uh, and uh, as far as you know, the the marketing side of Advisor is concerned, we have, in fact, I'm so proud uh, that we have made our, you know, made made a very, very healthy relationship with people in the with people in the music uh, territory. Uh, we have supported Divine. Uh, you may know he's our brand ambassador. Uh, and since last three years, you know, we have traveled the journey uh, with Divine. Uh, even before, you know, uh, they started to think about making Kaliba on that. Uh, and as you can see, if you if you know anything about Rule the New, uh, the contest, if you have checked it out online, uh, we do have Zoya and Jay, which is the group from the Gali Gang partnering on us, uh, uh, with us on, on Rule the New, right? So, and this is this is the first time that, uh, you know, that Budweiser is, uh, is, is uh, coming forth and collaborating with filmmakers, content creators, photographers, uh, to, you know, for, for any of our campaigns, right? Uh, and why we decided to do it at this point of time was that we saw in the time of COVID, you know, in the last, in the last two and three months, uh, you know, when the, when, when shit hit the fan, you know, and everybody was, uh, everybody was shocked, you know, as shocked as each other. Uh, it was art and content, uh, you know, was, was, was a pillar that, uh, that kept people going through COVID, right? So it was, spreading awareness uh, initially in the start, you know, telling people that, hey guys, this is real, you know, take it super seriously, uh, follow all the rules of social distancing, staying at home, lockdown and stuff like that. And then when you enter the middle phase of COVID, you know, when all of us were stuck at home, it was, uh, it was content that was either, you know, uplifting uh, or entertaining us, right? It was, it was helping us, uh, helping us to keep going. Uh, and it was uh, in a lot of ways showing uh, you know what's happening out there with with the front runners uh, that were there on the that were there on the ground, right? So doctors, policemen, all the news that we were getting, all the content that we were seeing around around our heroes out there was so inspiring, right? Uh, and as we enter, you know, as we now enter unlock 1.0, unlock 2.0 in some cities, I know things are different uh, in several cities, and uh, some cities are going into a lockdown again. Uh, but as the as we approach the peak, and you know, and hopefully a vaccine is on the cards pretty soon, right? Uh, we we really think you know that we have hit like the third phase of of COVID communication, right? So now people are the consumer insight or the consumer tension that we are coming after uh, is that people are now 
you know people people want to take back their lives you know it's been it's been so much it's been so it's been so long you know sitting at home doing nothing or just just feeling this locked up and now that unlock 1.0 is here we want to want to resume you know we want to get back uh but at the same time there are new rules out there you know if i if i meet uh, shitaj or any of you you know tomorrow uh, we wouldn't know how to say hi right uh, do we hug it out do we give a high five okay that's not allowed this is not allowed you know so there are new rules out there right and uh, and it's it's for us you know we think that people have a little bit of anxiety in imagining you know how to safely navigate this new normal right uh, and this is where we believe that you know the most powerful uh, you know piece of uh, piece of content uh, the most powerful set of people uh, that that can go in uh, go out there and show that you know and show and inspire people ke hey guys you don't have to you know just because covid is here you don't have to stop everything uh, you know you can it's here to stay uh, in the in the near future but at the same time we can be social and we can be safe right uh, we can navigate our lives by being safe and how to do that is uh, is is the campaign is all about right is the initiative is all about uh, which we are calling rule the new so without uh, without further uh, delay what i'll do is i'll just take you through the through the deck uh can somebody give me a shout out if they can see the screen because i'm i'm going to project this on full screen yes yes we can absolutely amazing thanks guys uh yeah so it's a it's a it's an initiative that uh, you know that that went live uh last week uh, we're calling it rule the new uh, and it's a challenge and it's a creator focused challenge right it's not a, it's not an open challenge on instagram where Uh, and we are not publicizing you know to each and everyone out there we are specifically sharply uh, you know going after content creators like yourself uh, and we are projecting this you know as 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 a great opportunity we think we believe that it's it's right now it's it's a great time to tap in this insight to create content that can inspire people right and and show people how to how to rule the new right how to how to go out there and conquer uh, the new normal i'm so sorry some of the some of the text seems to be quite loud is it just my screen or can you guys can't see the text as well no we can't see the text in right sorry guys give me a second give me a second yeah i have i have the ppt version great yeah i'm sorry i'll just uh, I'll, i'll resume from here right uh, at the core of this idea i mean uh, we wanted to reach out to the widest you know creator base possible uh, and throw throw this challenge open to them right and we are hoping uh, you know in the, at the end of the challenge where what we want to do is we want to populate populate a hack library you know imagine this new handle on instagram which becomes the one go to place if you want to see you know how to navigate the new normal right and then popularize this library pick the top hacks uh, and create a, you know create create the next budweiser film out of that right so almost like uh, source creator content uh, and create inspirational hacks for people to tap into uh, and navigate their own lives right uh, for us you know for for uh, for content creators the brief uh, is is simple the brief is simple the execution as i should have showed us is uh, is kind of uh, is tough uh, massive respect for the guys who do it uh, i got to know today you know what what goes uh, behind making uh, even like a 30 second right which uh, is something that uh, i personally have never done so massive respect guys the the brief you know is uh, is to show us how can you be social but safe at the same time right so how to how to comply to all covid safety norms but yet do what what we missing doing right since the last two months so what how to hang out you know how to how to go to movies or how to screen movies 
how to go to pubs or or how to eat out anymore uh, you can see you know this guy actually uh, flipped his fence uh, this is his uh, fence with the neighbor he actually made it like a table uh, and every evening you know him and his neighbor kind of get together uh, and have some beers you know uh, the next thing is you know uh, how to play sports right uh, how to watch or play sports in the new normal is are there any creative ways that we can look at uh, and you'll see some of the entries already on the handle people are getting very creative with uh, with with this stuff right uh, the second thing is show that how to date you know or how to love uh, in in the new normal now that there is no intimacy uh, you know involved in and you have to be six feet apart even when you're going on a date how to do that right there's a very there is very cool hack already uploaded in the uh, in the in the entry and the guys came up with an idea of cycle dates you know what if you just uh, what if you're two you're on two different cycles uh, and that's your date right you you go on a cycle ride and uh, meet meet each other for the first time how to party anymore yeah uh, what does a what does a social distance party look like or what does a new party look like these guys actually got baby bath buckets uh, and spread them under a uh, spread them under a uh, you know under a uh, under a stage uh, and that's how they were partying i don't know if you go if you guys saw the video of uh, germans uh, doing a drive in party they basically there was a dj set up on the you know on the on the on the stage of a parking lot and germans kind of you know drove inside uh and they had this huge parking lot party going on nobody got out of their cars nobody touched each other uh but but they but they ended up partying right so that was that was one of the ideas uh how do you go on holidays how do you do adventure you know how do you do trips or how do you travel anymore right i know that there are uh there are you know and all of this has to be done in a very very safe way so is there if, if there's anything that involves you guys stepping out and breaking the safety norms wherever you are in the country don't do that uh instead let's let's think very creatively uh, of new hacks and uh, uh and and submit uh at the end of the contest you know it's it's uh, the deadline is 27th of july i'll take it through a timeline in a bit uh we will have uh you know zoya and j who are already uh, empaneled uh, in our team and they are actually you know uh, going through the hacks every day whatever you guys submit if you get featured on the on the rules the new handle uh your work is getting uh you know uh, reviewed by both jay oza uh, and zoya after so yeah, everybody knows jay by the way is the cinematographer uh, of kali boy uh, very very cool guy i think he has done cinematography for masan as well uh a uh, very cool person uh, to to get along with uh and not just that you know i mean you have a you have at the at the end of the contest if you're in the if you're in the top 25 uh, we actually get on a call uh, with both zoya and jay Uh, almost almost like a imagine like the rule the new version of the i5 awards party or something like that with both of them interacting with the top 25 uh, creators uh, and that's where you know the announcements of uh, of the winners happen right uh, and uh, yeah and then there is there is uh, there is great great prizes on the table as well uh, so the contest winner the top hack entry uh, with both uh, you know uh, jay and zoya will will concur and agree on and decide who's the winner uh will get you know sponsorship amount from from our side uh, uh up to 10 lakhs right so we can we can actually looking at uh we are actually looking at sponsoring your next project whatever you're taking on next uh and whenever whenever you want to take on within the you know within the next 6 to 8 months uh we'll be backing your project with with uh, with sponsorship of support uh, up to 10 lakhs right top 5 entries get uh, an iphone 11 reach uh i'm personally you know gunning for this one so i'm going to i'm going to use my old phone to create content uh in hope that i i i end up in the in the top 5 uh and then of course top 25 and top 50 uh indefin project is a, is is the is the key partner uh with us uh, on on rule the new uh and you know we have uh, we have top 25 people uh getting a free hall pass into the film making challenge the 50 hour film making challenge that they do every year Uh, and that's upcoming in september if i'm not wrong uh, usually i believe it costs about 4 to 5000 for uh, for you to participate in this uh, in this challenge uh, and if you end up in the top 50 you get uh, two free tickets to india film project this time i think they have an online uh, online version uh, and if you feature on the on the rule the new uh, handle uh, you get a six pack of advisor on us right so you just have to dm uh, the details as soon as you feature that hey my entry got featured here's my handle and here's my number and name uh, and we'll send you a coupon that you can redeem uh, at your nearest bar and restaurant right so uh, a six pack of advisor is on the cards uh, 
if you if you even featured uh, on the rule that you had it right uh, there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of reference hacks that uh, that we had put together uh, our our uh, you know if you want if you want more details you can always visit uh, the rule that you handle i'm following the i'm following the i'm following the handle pretty closely myself uh all the details in terms of you know rules faqs stickers how to use them what are the rewards who is the jury i've taken uh, taken you through that everything everything is kind of in here uh at this point you know let me let me stop uh and open open the floor for any questions that you guys might have yeah guys any any questions happy to answer what do we need to do so hardik is asking what do we need to do hardik you first need to uh, we need to think of a hack you know of uh, that shows people how you can be social and safe in the new normal right uh, some of the references are already on instagram i'll just take you some of the take you through some of the entry so that you you get an idea right uh, yeah we need to either shoot uh you know a small video or a photograph uh, that shows people how can they be safe and uh, social in in the new normal right so these are this is one of the entries if you can if you can see the screen they actually uh, divided their dance studio using plastic sheets and uh, yeah so they didn't stop dancing they were just dancing in their own in their own zones right and it was pre sanitized and post sanitized so that's one of the hacks uh that uh, that the guys uh the guys submitted uh there was there was a hack yeah this this guy actually pahadi pandit you know he submitted an entry where he hosted a rooftop concert uh in his neighborhood right so he was singing from the rooftop he put an amp uh beside the guitar uh and people were watching either from the either from the the other terraces or or from the or from the garden below right so yeah i'm sure i mean the guys wrote a script uh, they thought of a concept first you know uh, a creative hack uh, to to be safe and social in the new normal and then they executed it right if you want more inspiration just uh, you know you can follow rule the new handle uh, all of the hacks getting reposted are actually featured entries so these are people who have been creating content since the last 3 uh, 4 days uh, and i have been uh, you know hosting uh, uploading them on uh, on instagram uh, this is one entry where they actually are playing kabaddi but with sticks yeah so that's the that's the new way to play kabaddi without touching each other yeah so some of the examples are here to take a video or a photo basically yes correct first think of a great hack like a creative way to hack the new normal uh, and then either submit using a very quick video instagram friendly video so maybe 15 to 30 seconds uh, and uh, and and uh, or or a video or a or a static photograph yes yes so we need to the way of submission guys i'm sorry i think i missed out i missed uh, i missed that out in the in the brief hang on this one that's correct so uh the way to the way to submit and feature is when you create a hack you know you you have to tag this handle called rule the new right and tag but wiser india uh and that's a submission is very it's very simple you post from your own profile uh you know think of a hack shoot the hack uh share the hack on post the hack on instagram and tag rule the new and but wiser india both uh to you know to allow us to pick up uh you know the hack in this feed right so that we can be posted and you can get featured on the uh, featured on that as a repost uh, it's a sim simple uh, you know submission mechanic allow me to take you you know through the through the detail rules uh, uh, in a few seconds uh, first up we can only pick your hack you know we can only pick a submission if your if your instagram profile is public if it's uh, if it's a private profile we cannot repost it hence you know and we cannot even see your submission uh, so first thing to make sure is that your instagram profile is public the second thing is uh, uh anchita spoke about this uh, in in uh, in a bit right so how to make 
make sure that the piece of content that you're creating, the photo or the video is Instagram friendly, right? So that's, uh, uh, that's the second most important thing. You can submit as many hacks as you like. Multiple submissions are allowed. Uh, as discussed, don't forget to tag Do the New and Budweiser India. Uh, and ask your followers to check out the handle for more hacks, right? We're creating a, we're creating a full library. Uh, no compromise on safety measures, guys. So all social distancing and uh, COVID safety measures, these are non-negotiable. Uh, we shouldn't break any of them, right? Uh, you don't have to feature uh, the product at all. There's no, there's no necessity of uh, featuring, you know, Budweiser or any of its, uh, any of its variants. Uh, but at the same time, since we are a beer company, we cannot uh, post anything that's featuring people below uh, legal drinking age. Yeah. So everybody who features in the video and you yourself, preferably, uh, should be above 21 years of age, right? The deadline of submission is 20, 27th of July. Uh, and of course, the hacks uh, will be selected on, on the creativity and quality of the overall video or static. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the top level rules. I see more questions coming in. Deadline is 27th of, uh, 27th of July. That's about 10 days from now. Yeah. How do you check whether someone is copying from others? I know filming... I know filming can be can be different. I if I understand Hardik, the question is if somebody thought of a hack and somebody else shot it and submitted it before you, how do we check that? Unfortunately, no, we we don't have uh, a mechanic to do that. But if you think you know it was your original content and somebody somebody copied it, uh, you can always DM us and tell us. You know. Okay, sure, the deadline is, uh, is 27th of July. Thanks, Adik. Thanks for the questions. Guys, any other questions, you can send them on the chat. I'll be happy to answer. We hope so too. Thanks, Adik. Uh, can't wait for your hack to come in. Guys, okay, any any other questions? Where to see the rules? Uh, Kishore, just go to rules and you handle. Uh, all the information uh, is there on the Instagram handle for uh, uh, for Rule the New. Do you have any social media account? Yes, it's called Rule the New. If you type Rule the New on uh, on Instagram, that is the handle. So it has everything. It has the brief. It has the rules. Yeah. Oh, you, you're asking for my personal handle? Yeah, you can search my name, Swamit uh, Chauve. It's not very active, but it's there. Yeah. Also, uh, guys, I uploaded the, the briefing deck, uh, you know, uh, although all the, all the brief and everything is, uh, is there uh, on Instagram, but in case you want to download, I just sent you the link yeah. on chat. Great. Guys, uh, any, any other questions? Just repeating, uh, the brief to be the brief is to be uh, to create a hack which shows people how can they be social and safe at the same time. Uh, the categories are uh, hangout, uh, party, travel, uh, romance, and sports. Yeah, these are the five categories that you can create your hacks in uh, and and submit. Uh, and if you think that you know somebody else uh, created a version of a hack, do bring it to us to to. To, to our notice, you know, uh, yeah. All right, guys, uh, if there are no questions, I'll, I'll hand it back to the cheese team and, and Shitich.
Hi, thanks so much. Thank you for that. Uh, so much that was amazing, and uh, we are eagerly waiting for this. And uh, we hope that uh, people here come up with some brilliant ideas. And because I'm eagerly waiting to see what creativity people hold in terms of executing such a brief. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, guys. I'm personally very excited as well. Every day I'm just yeah stalking uh, the hashtag to see newer and newer entries, and people are very very creative. Yeah. You will see some of the entries get yeah. featured soon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, super excited. Thanks a ton for hosting. Uh, thanks and goodbye. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Well, guys, we are actually done. And uh, if anybody has any questions or anybody wants to ask anything related to the uh, uh, the filmmaking process today, just go ahead. I will definitely share. the ppt as well and uh, there is a question how can we approach the sponsors and brands for uh, content well you need to create uh, content that really attracts them and once your content starts attracting them that is the time when you go and with a portfolio and you talk to these brands well come and do work with us or come and work with us come and, uh, shoot with us and that is how you start talking to brands um you sure uh if you can look on the screen uh, do check it out i'm going to put the link again now uh, we have an app called the shoot guru app uh, and it is it has a lot of free content available for you guys to watch it has free editing uh, workshops uh, it has everything there um and uh, i'm just going to see if i can give you guys the link as well Okay, Ji. I think we're done with the question. If there are no more questions, we can actually finish it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, this. Uh, I guess uh, if anyone has question, they can directly uh, ping you. Of course, they can DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is uh, hashtag uh, is uh, at the red shoot guru s h w t g u r u. And in case you want uh, more information about anything that we do, and uh, of course. Uh, i'm going to put the but uh, guidelines also up on the app everything uh, runs to the app this is the link uh, you guys can download for android and of course for ios uh, just feel free to ask question there is a lot of free content available on the app sure sure uh thank and you thank you for giving thank you for the team for uh, giving this opportunity to talk here today and it's been complete fun and a pleasure to you thank you very much this and this is the second time we have we had an opportunity to host you it was really amazing and uh, everything you explained in a very simple language and lot of people those who have misconceptions especially you know there are lot of doubts are clear and we will the recording will be available on uh, youtube channel we'll share it with you and guys if anyone has any question please don't forget to follow shoot guru a very easy handle to to locate and very active too uh yep i answer all my uh, dms yeah and he he is very active in responding and i guess if it is video um he is the guy to go to for photos actually we have uh, like for video we don't have many people those who are so active actually so thank you very much everyone yeah, yeah. we do photo video both but yeah if it's purely film then i'm your man I know you do photography, but I always connect you, or I visualize when I talk to you only video. <laughs> Because I I love doing films. I personally really love shooting films, so films have always been uh, very very uh, main thing for me. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, um, everyone. Stay blessed. Good night. Take care. Good night. See you. Thank you. <laughs>